Hey everyone, I'm Paul Salter. Today, we'll be discussing everything you need to know about hydration. Nutrition and diets of today revolve around three things, protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Known collectively as the macronutrients, the big three are the focal point of all diets. No longer is calorie counting in. Instead, it's all about whether a food fits your macros. This is because the ratio between protein, carbs, and fat has a major impact on your health, physique, and exercise performance. Although the big three macronutrients, so named for their large size relative to the micronutrients, are important, they often garner too much attention. So much that this focus overshadows the most important macronutrient of them all, or what I like to refer to as the forgotten macronutrient. This nutrient is the first I ask about when a one-on-one -on -one client of mine tells me they're hungry. This nutrient is the first I ask about when a one-on-one -on -one client of mine reports they've been feeling fatigued. This nutrient is the first I ask about when a one-on-one -on -one client of mine reports they've had recurring headaches. I'm referring to water, the fourth or forgotten macronutrient, the most essential nutrient there is. In this course, I'm going to provide you with the information and tools you need to better understand the role water plays in keeping you feeling great and at a healthy weight. Sit back, grab a glass of water, and prepare to become hydrated. On this video, we'll be discussing the most essential nutrient of them all. Water is essential, literally. Without it, you will not survive. You could actually survive an exponentially longer time for going one of the three macronutrients than you could if you went without water. Besides helping to maintain life, water performs several other important roles throughout the human body, including serving as a critical component of your brain, blood, muscles, and bones, transporting glucose and oxygen into your muscles, aiding digestion of food, aiding the conversion of food into usable energy, removing metabolic byproducts like carbon dioxide from your working muscles, and regulating body temperature. So, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. And if you put it on the back burner of your nutrition approach, you lose out on a slew of benefits and instead suffer from a variety of preventable consequences. Your body is composed of roughly 70% water. If you're not drinking enough, you're doing yourself a major disservice. Your brain is composed of nearly 80% water. <laughs> Good luck getting any work done when you're dehydrated. Your muscles are 75% water. Good luck performing well in the gym when you're dehydrated. Your bones are 22% water. A dehydrated bone is surely to be at a greater risk for a fracture or breakage, especially with age. More specifically, when you're dehydrated, you can expect frequent headaches, feelings of lightheadedness, fatigue, and recurring hunger. Hmm, sounds like fun. The fact that water makes up nearly 70% of your body should be reason enough to start prioritizing it throughout your day. But in case you need more convincing, continue to the next video to learn how the lack of water can affect your day-to-day -day activities. On this video, we're going to dive deeper into dehydration. After watching the previous video, I'm sure you probably thought, okay, yeah, water, it's good stuff. I shouldn't forget it and I should probably drink more. But is that single thought going to get you to change your ways? Probably not. Which is why I want to go one step further and find that pain point you experience during the day that is most likely influenced by your poor hydration habits. Once you're able to connect the dots, 
hopefully you'll be able to realize just how important water is and the significant impact it has on your day. By the time you sit down at your desk to start the day, it's possible the only water you've had is the remnants from brushing your teeth. You did brush your teeth, didn't you? And potentially the little bits you had in your morning coffee or tea. Come late morning, you begin losing focus on the task at hand. And as a pick-me-up, you opt for a second cup of coffee or tea or a heavily processed snack from the vending machine. Come two o'clock, you yet again feel as if you've run out of steam. Hmm, coffee number three or another snack. This time, it's a snack. But wait, you just finished lunch an hour ago. How is it that you're already hungry again? Later at the gym, you're just not feeling it. The weight you used last week feels twice as heavy this week and you're unable to push out those few extra reps. Instead, you rack the weight and leave it at that. Had you been properly hydrating throughout the day, you wouldn't have needed a late or mid-afternoon snack, and you most likely wouldn't have had a much better workout. But that was only day one. Can you imagine the ripple effect this has on your health and weight over the course of weeks, months, and years to come? So I finally got your attention? Good! Next, let's discuss how you can tell whether you're hydrated. In case you need to take action to avoid any of the consequences of dehydration I previously discussed. On this video, we'll discuss whether or not you are hydrated. Are you hydrated? Probably not. So before you continue watching, do you and me a favor and grab a sip of water. And then, for good measure, take another sip. Okay, I'm glad you're back in a hydrated state. Knowing whether or not you're hydrated is an invaluable piece of knowledge to have. Why? Because if for whatever reason you're not hydrated, and there are a lot of factors that influence your hydration needs that we'll discuss shortly, you can quickly act to fix that and avoid continued feelings of fatigue, recurring headaches, or lightheadedness. And fortunately for you, it doesn't require any special test or pricey gadget, and you'll know whether you're hydrated in roughly one second. How do you tell? By looking at the color of your urine. Yup, you heard me right. Simply noticing the color of your urine is a way to gain immediate feedback about your hydration status. Your goal is to be light like lemonade. If you're dark like apple juice, you need to get fluid sooner rather than later. And if you're clear like water, you're not super hydrated. In fact, you're over hydrated, which can be just as detrimental as being dehydrated but more on that in a bit. Now, every time you use the restroom, take a quick peek at the color of your urine. This simple task could be the difference between a headache-filled afternoon or an uber-productive one. Next up, we'll discuss the several factors that influence your hydration needs. In this video, we'll discuss how much fluid you should be drinking during the day. How much fluid should you be drinking during the day? Well, more than you currently do, that's for sure. The recommended eight glasses per day is outdated. If you wanna start feeling, performing, and looking better, your goals are as follows. Women should aim for 96 ounces of fluids per day. That's 12 standard glasses, six standard water bottles, or four standard shaker bottles per day. Men should aim for 125 ounces of fluids per day. That's 16 standard glasses, seven and a half standard water bottles, or five and a half standard shaker bottles per day. Fortunately, these recommendations encompass total fluids and not just water. But before we discuss the best beverages to drink throughout the day, let's first discuss the many factors that may impact your hydration needs. It's likely your hydration needs greatly exceed those minimum recommendations. So grab a sip of water and continue watching.
In this video, we'll discuss the factors influencing your fluid needs. The most obvious factor influencing your daily fluid needs right now is your gender. We just talked about it. However, it's important to note that this general recommendation is based on the average difference in body size that exists between genders. Gender and body size aside, there are several other pertinent variables that influence your daily fluid needs. Yes, the altitude you reside at has a big influence on your hydration needs. That's because the higher in elevation you are, the lower the air pressure and humidity typically are. As a result, evaporation of moisture from your skin is accelerated. Translation, you lose more water. Furthermore, your body works to normalize bodily pH levels at higher altitudes. And one way it does so is by increasing urine frequency. Again, more water loss. If you reside at a higher altitude or are vacationing somewhere that's much higher than you're accustomed to, consider increasing your daily fluid intake by 10 to 20%. The outside temperature and humidity also influence your hydration needs. Both hot and humid clients increase fluid needs. An elevated temperature significantly increases your body temperature which leads to sweating or water loss to cool the body down. When the air is humid, sweat doesn't evaporate as quickly. Thus, your body temperature remains elevated and you sweat even more. Again, more water loss. Very cold temperatures also influence your hydration needs. Rather than wasting energy heating body fluids up, your body rids this excess water, which further increases your fluid needs. And when you feel thirsty, that's a sign you're already slightly dehydrated. Think about that for a second. As you age, this signal weakens, meaning that you may get an, go an extended amount of time without fluids simply because you never feel thirsty. And this is no bueno. After the age of 50, it's important to begin making a conscious effort to remind yourself to drink periodically throughout the day. Consider setting an alarm or making it a habit to drink a glass of water each time you eat. And lastly, your activity level heavily influences your daily fluid needs. Before we discuss how exercise alters your goal, and we'll spend many videos on this, Let's first talk about some of the best beverages you can drink to support optimal hydration.